Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll show you how to use my latest upload to the Reactor User Library which is a crossover filter. If you guys like this tutorial please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new Reactor content at least once a week. Okay, so the crossover filter splits an incoming audio signal into two streams one low pass and one high pass and these are both controlled by the same pitch knob and so the idea is one of the signals coming out of the crossover filter will contain all of the low frequency information in the signal and the other signal will contain all of the uh, hi high frequency information and so we can process the two audio streams individually and then add them back together again and this allows us to create some pretty interesting effects uh, this is the kind of filter they use for example in multi-band compression so anyway I have it set up right now to um, we have two pitch shifters and we're gonna pitch all of the low frequency information up by an octave and all of the high frequency information down by an octave. And let's listen to what that sounds like. Alright, so the crossover filter is just a simple low pass, high pass filter combination. But what makes it special is that um, when you add both of the signals together, you get the same frequency response that you started with. So here I have a simple ensemble set up where we can look at the spectra of the high pass, the low pass, and the high pass plus the low pass. And um, you'll see that when we look at the two filters added together, we get a flat frequency response. And um, I tried to do this at first with the built-in reactor filters, and it never quite worked. Uh, there was always like a six decibel uh, bump or gain in the frequency response, depending on what setup I tried to use. So the filters I ended up using are fairly basic. They're from the Audio EQ Cookbook by Robert Bristow Johnson, and I'll leave a link to that in the video description. It's a pretty commonly cited book on filter design, or it's not really a book, it's like a two-page paper. All right, so let's take a look at the guts of this ensemble, and I'll show you how we can set up the crossover filter. So each audio input gets split into two uh, streams here and we're gonna route both of the low pass streams to one pitch shifter both of the high pass streams to another pitch shifter and when we're done we can add together the left outputs and the right outputs so this is pretty simple to set up but we can take it a step further and actually continue to split the frequency spectrum into more than two pieces so let's take a look at that for a second Let's uh, start out by getting rid of all this extraneous stuff here. And I'm just going to focus on splitting the left channel into four bands. So what we can do is, once the uh, signal's been split in half, we can simply use another line of crossover filters to split it in half again. And the one thing that we need to do here is to change the pitch values of our new um, crossovers. And we need to make sure that the low pass filter gets split in half um, with a pitch that is less than the original pitch knob here. And we want to make sure that the high pass filter gets split um, by a value that is higher than the original uh, pitch 
So I'm just gonna add 24 to both of these values, which is, you know, gonna split them up by a two octave range, which should be enough. Um, so the closer these frequencies are to each other, these pitches are to each other, the uh, more likely that you're gonna get distortions in your frequency response. So it's good to spread out your frequency bands as much as possible. And you can of course split uh, the audio into as many bands as you like, but again, the more times you do that, the more you run the risk of distorting your frequency response. So once we're done here, we can process each of these four outputs separately and then add the um, results together, and that'll be the left channel of our audio. The crossover filter is available for download in the reactor user library, and I'll leave a link to that in the video description. The download is just for the core cell containing the filter itself, not the pitch shifter ensemble I was playing around with earlier, although um, obviously recreating that ensemble would be pretty simple as we already saw. Alright, this is Salamander Anagram for ReactorTutorials.com. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please check out our website, and I'll be back next week with a new Reactor video.